This video will be an introduction to the main idea of Bayesian inference, as they call it, named after the Reverend Thomas Bayes, who in the 1700s formulated Bayes' rule, or at least he's credited with it. And Bayesian inference, the main idea, well at least as I like to think about it, is you put distributions on everything, all the things that you're interested in, roughly speaking, everything, and then use the, the rules of probability. You just use the rules of probability to figure out, to infer what you're interested in knowing. So let's illustrate this with a, a, little, a little story. So let's say Tom, say Tom, this is Tom, Tom's a student at XYZ University and he is uh, interested in earning some extra cash so Tom, Tom decides to work at the athletics department. So this is Tom, right? And at the athletics department, so he's working at the athletics department, and there the coach of the football team, there's the coach, coach says, hey Tom, you're you're good at math and statistics. You you know, you take all the those those classes. I'm skeptical about the length of our football field. I think that it might not be actually 100 yards long. So here's the football field, and this is American football, by the way, and it's supposed to be 100 yards. But we don't know, or the coach doesn't know at least. And so he says, hey Tom, why don't you go and figure out, use all that statistics and stuff, try to figure out how long this football field really is. So Tom says, okay. Let me think of uh, so figure out how to do this. So Tom says, "All right, well, let's see. All I've got here is this. I've only all he's got is a little yardstick. He's only got one yardstick. He doesn't have a nice tape measure or anything, you know, one of those rolly things to measure the length. So all he's got is this yardstick. So he, he says, "All right, well, I'll I'll use this." And he goes out and he makes some measurements. So he has to you know, line it up a bunch of times here and measure the length. And he very patiently does that and he comes up with some measurements. So he maybe he does that repeatedly since he's very statistically minded and he gets a first measurement of 101 yards and then he gets say 100.5 and 101.5 something like that. So those are his three. So let's call those x1, x2, and x3. So this is his data. x1, x2, And Tom says, okay, now I know that the Gaussian or normal distribution is good for modeling measurement errors. So why don't I model my measurements here, my xi's, as normally distributed with mean, so the mean, there's some true length. I, mean, I think, you know, there, there's some true length. So let's say the mean is that true length and let's call that theta. So let's call theta the true length. And it has some, my measurements have some variance, let's say one yard, something like that. Keep things simple. And uh, so Tom says to himself, okay, well now now I, I have this model and, oh, and, and I'll, also I should assume that these are independent or IID given this, you know, given this theta. And so Tom says, okay, now, now that I have this, I can compute the maximum likelihood estimate. I can compute theta MLE, which is just the sample mean of my data. So that's just the average. One over, let's call n, let's say n is 3. So it's just 1 over n times the sum of the xi's. And here that's just, uh, let's see, so that's just, oh, it's just 101. So that's nice. So we've got the MLE, but you know, 
it's a point estimate, and so, um, and also, so one, well, one thing is it's a point estimate, and the other thing is, you know, Tom says to himself, I, you know, the football field, I know it's supposed to be a hundred yards long, and I haven't really accounted for that at all here. So shouldn't I be sort of taking that into account? You know, uh, the fact that I I have some prior knowledge about how long the football field should be. And so he says, okay, well, I know how to do that. So let's, so I can always put a, a prior distribution on theta. So I can take theta to be a random variable and maybe make it normal just for, just to keep things nice and simple. And maybe it's normal with mean 100. It should, ought to be 100 at least, since that's what our expectation is, and maybe variance 1. So there's something, you know, you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a second, you know, I thought theta was the true length. I mean, the field actually has some true length, and, and now you're saying that it's random? And Tom says, well, yeah, okay, that is kind of funny, but here's how I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it as that this is my, my the probability di distribution representing my belief about the true length of the football field before I saw any of the data. So he says, this is just, this is just my belief. This, I'm not saying that the true thing is some random, you know, that the, the true quantity is actually random. This is just representing my, my sort of prior, my uncertainty or, or, you know, level of certainty about where it is. Okay, so then, using that prior Tom can compute the map estimate and so I I, I uh, so this is going to be somewhere between 101 and 100 and we did this computation before computing the map and so I can I pre-computed this and you can check that it's 100.75 So Tom gets these two measurements, and he goes back to the coach, and he says, all right, so I think I did some statistics. I took some measurements. I think it's longer than 100 yards. I think it might be actually around 100.75 yards. And the coach says, what? That's, you know, that is crazy. That, that's not possible, because I thought that it was shorter than 100 yards. And in fact, I'm so sure of the fact that that field is less than 100 yards. I'll bet you $50 that it is shorter than 100 yards. And Tom says, hmm, okay, well, let's see, $50, that would be that would be pretty nice. Let me think about this a little bit more. So Tom goes off, and he sits down, and he, he uh, starts thinking to himself. He says, well, you know, I just have these point estimates, and they would suggest that the length is longer than 100 yards, but how certain am I really that it's longer you know that fifty dollars you know that's a lot of money I don't have you know, I'm, you know strapped for cash that that would be pretty rough if I had to pay out fifty bucks so uh, so let me think about how sure I am how certain am I that it's actually longer than a hundred yards so what Tom is interested in is the probability that theta is less than 100 given his data. This is the thing that Tom wants to compute. And this is the probability in the sense that it's his level of belief about this. Because this prior is just encoding, it's not some true thing, it's, it's his, his level of belief. So this is what Tom wants to compute. And in order to compute that, he needs to get the density of theta given the data, right? Because if he had, if he could get this density, then he could somehow, maybe using his computer at least or something, he could he could figure out 
what the probability is. You know, how much of that density, how much of that that distribution is less than 100. And so this thing, of course, this is the prior, or no, not the prior, this is the posterior distribution on theta given the data. So Tom wants the posterior. And in order to compute it, he starts off, he says, okay, well, I can use Bayes' rule, probability of theta given the data equals probability of the data given theta times times the probability, these are lowercase p's since this is a density or, you know, I use lowercase p for densities or PMS, and uh, times the probability of theta divided by the probability of the data. But here, it turns out that, so there's a little trick called, um, well, it's to write, if you write a distribution as proportional to something else, this is a function of theta, if we can just write it as an expression that's proportional to theta, then we don't need to, th then that uniquely characterizes the distribution. So, oh well, I guess we don't, so that's that's not particularly important here. So, but anyway, that you, he does this, and now he has a, a defined distribution for the his data given theta. That's this this product of normals here. times the probability of theta divided by the probability of the data. And I'm not going to work it all out, but it turns out that this posterior can be expressed in closed form as a Gaussian, it's a normal distribution over theta. So this is a this is normal. And if Tom works out all the computations, he can analytically compute this and then use a lookup table or, you know, computer MATLAB or something to compute this quantity. And then he can, you know, say, use decision theory or, you know, to minimize his, you know, define some, some loss function and minimize his expected loss in this scenario. And he can make an informed, you know, a well, you know, justified decision about what to do, whether he should bet the $50 or not. So this is, uh, this is a characteristic sort of Bayesian problem. Now, Tom might also be interested in computing. He might want to know what is the distribution on a new x, so we had these x's, what if we took, what if he went out and took another measurement? then this is also normally distributed the same way. And this is the probability of x given the data. This is called the predictive distribution, or sometimes people say posterior predictive. And this, well, theta doesn't appear here at all, right? But, but you know, x is defined in terms of a distribution given theta. These are iid given. These are, you know, to sometimes people say conditionally independent given theta. And x is also conditionally independent of the others. So he needs to integrate out theta. So this becomes probability of x and theta given data. And then this can be factored as the probability of x given, since it's conditionally independent, we can drop the dependence on the data times the probability of theta given the data. And it's a beautiful fact, it turns out, that this also can be integrated analytically, and the predicted distribution is also Gaussian. It's a beautiful fact. And so Tom could actually analytically compute this predictive distribution and use it as well. So this is just a, a motivating example for, these are some classic sort of uh, Bayesian, a Bayesian approach to this, to this type of problem.